Hello, welcome to a Monday Business News Report. It's now time to bring you our feature on the show today. We're looking at the state of the economy through the lens of Nigeria's ability to feed its citizens. Now, the October 2021 Food Security and Nutrition Analysis, which is known as CADA Harmonize, conducted in 20 states in Nigeria and the Federal Capital Territory, has revealed that about 12.1 million persons expected to be in food security crisis or even worse situation by the end of this year. A joint report by the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, United Nations Children's Fund and the World Food Programme reveal this. Now, the UN explained that the ongoing conflict in the northeastern part of the country, as well as the lingering economic impact of the COVID-19 pandemic, continues to drive hunger in the country. It also says analysis involved shows that 154.08 million people out of the 12.1 million in the participating 20 states plus the FCT are currently experiencing crisis and emergency phases of food security. Joining me now to discuss this and much more, I have the Chief Executive Officer of Envirogro Farms in Kiru Opareke. Good to have you on The Breakfast Show this morning. Thank you, Damila. Good morning. Now, Glad to be here. You made mention of this crisis much earlier in our discussion. It's at uh, May, June thereabout. And you have the focus that a situation would only get worse. For the single reason we are not changing our tactics, tactics to food production. Do you see things getting further worsening at this point in time? Yes, I see things getting worse because um, within security, nothing has changed in the office. Nothing has changed. So farmers are still not going to the farm. Even the ones they were able to harvest, they can't go in because um, the, um, ter um, the, um, the bandits are going to harvest them. And this is where coming close to the Christmas period when there's such a high demand for food because of festive period and nothing has changed so it's i, I i'd say it's, I, it's not going to change because the things that are causing it haven't still changed mm. but do you think government understands the plight of the masses now there's inflation which is also reading the little wages many earn you want to buy food and you cannot necessarily do that in the scope of this discussion is there any possible means of uh price reduction or cut on the cost of food production in Nigeria today, even if we have to work within the shortest possible mean or medium term. Do you see any change? Tell me how they're going to cut the cost of food production. The food production industry is unstructured, it's unregulated. They keep saying that they're giving farmers money and the rest, but many of the time the farmers I work with and farmers like us, none of us are getting the money. They have the anchor borrow asking, but it's not trickling down. It goes to the states, that's supposed to that's supposed to share it out to the um, um, to the farmers. At the end of the day, it ends up in the hands of politicians. So the people who really need it don't get it. There's not going to be any change. They're not going to decrease it because it's unstructured. How are you going to get to the farmers? How are you going to get to the people? Hmm. Now, talking about the increments that we are likely going to see as well, as at last year, December, we saw vegetables, onion, for example, record about 300% increase. Now, the onions we have in the market are the smaller size one, wet ones, and it's even difficult to buy as well. Now, in terms of seasonality, which food items do you think we can likely have come a little cheaper irrespective of the bottlenecks of bringing them over to major cities and towns and a whole lot more which despite the seasons or with regards to the seasons that we'll likely have within this period the only vegetables that might come down are like peppers and tomatoes which is this is the period where they grow very well in the north and they always anticipate the high demand for christmas celebrations so they plant quite a lot so they are the only ones I, I know that are going to be cheap around this period. But every other thing, every other vegetable, nothing. Because um, things like even um, pumpkin leaf and the rest need a lot of water. This is a dry season. So that's not even going to come down. These are le leafy vegetables that are not going to come down because the water situation to where they are planted is not enough. So mm. it's only about tomatoes and peppers that are going to remain normal or going to come down a slight, a slight bit because of the, the market will be flooded with them in anticipation of the festive period. But every other thing, everything that has gone up, none is coming down. Even things as simple as yam, nothing is coming down. I know you are exhausted by this particular phase we are dealing with, but if you have to speak to the sentiment of government right now, speaking to government and advising, what are the major issues you'd say have to be addressed 
as we speak right now? This security has to be addressed. If they can't solve the insecurity in the Northeast, then they look at other regions which can produce and instead pump money or support farmers in those areas to increase their production to make up for the loss of production in the Northeast. That's what every other country will do. If I can meet the demand from this area, is that another area that can meet up that demand and then support the system till this other place is okay? But the most important thing is to solve this security problem. If we don't solve it, this is only just going to get, keep getting worse. Mm. And for farmers like yourself as well, who have to look at ways of maneuvering through this situation as at hand, because looking at the production base, it has to you, ha you have to deal with a whole lot of inflationary rates at different points in your uh, production process. How do you, what's your word to farmers as well, and how do you also stay afloat? It's a difficult terrain to maneuver through right now. The only way other farmers can start afloat is to see if you can sell directly to the um, retail, uh, to the home users. Because another problem we farmers have is that when we produce, produce in large quantity, we have to still go to the middlemen. And then the middlemen actually determine the price so they can squeeze you for price. If you can cut out the middlemen and try to get directly to the end users, you can make a bit more money and that might help you to remain sustainable over this period. Mm. But do you see the improvement in terms of our rail transport also helping to cut the middlemen looking at the fact ease of transportation so that we don't necessarily we have them straight from the farm to the market do you see some ease coming in with this uh yes, improvement service losses if we can get the products passed from the market from the farms to the market then the less loss will be absorbed by the farmers yes if the rail systems are working that tomato can come in from Kano to lagos in a day's time then we're going to cut a lot of losses and farmers can make more money. Mm. And your last words now to families that have to live through this uh, current phase of food crisis. What's your word to them as well? It's now time for rationing, some would say. It's time for rationing. Everybody has to be ingenious. So we have to go back to what our parents did. Unfortunately for many people living in Lagos, they can't do it. But everybody having a small garden, no matter what you can grow, no matter the leaves you can grow to support what you're cooking in your house. But... People just have to become ingenious about trying to at least put three square, even two square meals on the table because basically few people are eating three square meals now. Hmm. The situation on ground definitely is a crisis and we hope government wakes up and smells the coffee and takes action. Enough of lip service. Thank you very much once again for your time on The Breakfast Show this morning. In Kiro Opareke, it's been a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you, Damla, for having me this morning. Thank you.